everybody's been asking me to do a tutorial on drawing uh, supplies, right? Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to maybe make this a two-part video, and I am going to go over um, just general ink drawing supplies. So it will include what I use and also just a general overview on supplies that you will need to, or not necessarily need, but just general drawing, ink drawing supplies, pen and ink drawing supplies. Okay, so um, in this video, I'm going to focus on primarily the ink drawing instruments. I don't want to necessarily say pens because it, it, it encompasses more than that, okay? So I am going to introduce you to what I think are like the 10, in my opinion, the 10 most common or the 10 main types of ink drawing instruments, okay? Now, let's uh, first talk about the inks, okay? Um, let's see if I, which one I have here. This is uh, my black Indian ink. Um, and, and that's another thing too, like uh, it, it's, it's probably known as Indian ink, but it's actually originally from China. <laughs> so um, sometimes, you know, the common terms for things, the colloquial terms for things end up being the official term that's used regardless of, you know, whether it really coincides with the origin or not. The main quality about um, Indian ink is that it's pigment based, okay, you can have either in pigment-based ink or dye-based ink. And um, pigment-based ink is generally um, used particularly for the fact that it's waterproof. Um, it is archival. Um, so basically, if you want to do a, a types of work that you intend to be, to keep for a long time, um, you that especially works that you want to combine with other media. Like say for example you're gonna do a pen and ink wash over your drawing or you want to combine it with other mediums that's water based, it will not smudge or smear or anything like that. So Indian ink is pretty much good for that. However, because of that you don't also find it in as as wide array of colors as the other main type of ink you find in this, which is dye based ink. Um, now the thing is it's it's good to experiment with both, I think, but um, if you definitely uh, intend to work with other media like watercolor and stuff like that. It's good to get ink that is specifically waterproof, um, archival, and fade proof. All right, and that doesn't smudge as easily or smear as easily when combined with other mediums. I won't necessarily endorse any particular brand per se, but I would advise that you pay attention to the particular qualities of the ink based on the purposes you have in mind, okay? Um, so, what, let's go to the first type of ink drawing instrument, and perhaps this is one of the oldest ones, and it's the feather. Now, of course, it's often referred to as a quill pen, but this is not necessarily a quill feather. I had um, feathers just like this, see? and you can just pretty much cut it. Maybe I'll do a tutorial one day on how you can actually make the, um, the pen itself. And if you look at this, you'll see how I actually cut it. It has a little slit in there and um, that helps the ink to flow by capillary action. Um, so maybe one day I'll, I'll, I'll give a tutorial on how you can actually make this. It's pretty simple, but it's, it's pretty cool. Now, another thing that's useful too when you're working with ink is that it's good seeing like the bottle like for this like this is for example it's it's pretty dark you can't really see in it that well so it's good to like have like um, a little container see I'm using my little uh, Jamaican actually this is like a shot class <laughs> but um, you can have a clear container so you can get a clear view on how far to to dip whatever the drawing instrument is, if it's one that you're dipping into ink, all right? So um, it's pretty pretty simple and pretty easy to use. See, I'm dipping it in there just to get some, some ink. And a good thing when you're drawing with uh, any kind of an instrument where you're gonna have to dip in ink, it's always good to have some form of a, a material, like an absorbent, like a piece of cloth or, you know, paper towel to kind of like remove all the excess ink and stuff like that so you don't create like blobs and, and any kind of unwanted marks okay so you can see it, it's pretty cool because I can create lines of that varies in weight see 
It's pretty cool. Of course, this is perhaps one of the oldest form of ink drawing instrument. See that little a little blotch there. I'm not sure if you can see it, but that's one of the things that happens with um, you know drawing with instruments like this. Drawing instrument two is a reed pen, or you can think of it as a uh, bamboo um, pen. Now it's pretty much functions in a similar way to the the quill pen or feather pen, but it's it's using a bamboo or reed instead. See, and the same thing is, is, is happening here. It's pretty much cutting the same, and this is something you can make, you know. Um, it's cutting the same way. Here, you see this has a little opening there, and that also helps for the flow of ink. And it also has a slit there too, but because I used it before, you can barely see it. But it does have a little slit that also helps with the flow of the ink. Pretty cool. Really nice to use. Um, I would advise everybody to experiment with little stuff like this. It's really fun. See, even when the ink is running out, it still produces that nice kind of a texture. You can find uses for that, you know. Really cool stuff. Um, so of course this you know this is this goes back to centuries. This was a main writing and drawing instrument for many civilizations, including the uh, Chinese civilizations, um, Egyptian. You create really nice lines. We have the quill pen, we have the reed pen. Now, a natural progression from this that developed was the dip pen, okay? And um, <clears throat> see, the convenience of dip pens, and as the name says, you know, it's because you dip it in ink, is that now you have a nib or a point, however you want to refer to it, a nib that is metal. Okay, and see with this and this, they're pretty cool and pretty effective, but the thing is they the point wears over time. So the quality of the line will deteriorate based on the quality of the point. And because it's made of, you know, their natural materials, they will eventually soften. So you'd have to resharpen these after a while. But, you know, the, the thing is with nib pens is that it's pretty cool. You have a holder and you have a nib. And the cool thing is, you can get a wide variety of uh, nibs based on the different types of uh, line quality. Maybe if I can find my, uh, I haven't used these things in years. I have a little, th this is one of my containers of like different nib tips and stuff. Actually, this is for my technical, uh, my repeater graph. <laughs> um, so you see, you can have different nibs here based on the uh, line quality. Um, this one is definitely one of my favorites. I use these most actually. And I think they're pretty popular too. This is, I think this is the, uh, the Hunt 102, 107. Um, but the thing is with this is that it, it really, there are many artists who still use these, um, these dip pens. Okay, they're really cool. In terms of the, the, I think most of the drawings that you see that's done by like Rubens and those people, where you see a lot of the cross hatching, are done with these types of pens. You can create really nice lines. Um, and of course, you can also vary the weight as well. And you see that, you know, in the same way these are designed, this is pretty much just the metal version. See? the same same way see that it has a slit has the hole there in the same sense and it helps with the capillary action the movement of the the ink flowing to the tip and uh, you know what I think I'm gonna do a drawing using one of these 
I know most of my tutorials are always with the uh, Sigma Microns and maybe I should show a wide, wider variety of ink drawing instruments as well. And the thing is when you're using it, see you draw with the underside. This is the underside, okay? This is the underside, this is the back. You draw with the back facing up okay and the underside this side facing towards the paper like so and sometimes you can make marks going across like so and not necessarily like this and that's sometimes I do that to create these really fine marks for details because it tapers out beautifully and you can hear the little scratch that's because it's going against the, the texture of the paper. When it's like this, you get more fluid or smooth lines. And this is one of the smaller nibs. See that? Perfect for fine details. So you see the difference in line weight that I can create And go from really bold really light really this is a um, a round nib and it's good for especially for like writing and so on but I generally use it in my drawings when I do use them for like filling in large areas see so it's good for filling in spaces when you don't want to necessarily use a smaller nib for all that type of work really cool and see this the larger nibs what you find is they can create a wider variety or a wider range in line with but they don't they, they may not necessarily hold ink as uh, as much you see that line variation really cool to use Um, really fun to use. See, if I if I follow myself, I just keep keep doing this. Um, so, feather, so you have the feather pen, you have the quill pen, um, the reed or bamboo pen, um, you have the dip pens, and then the next one is the fountain pen. Now, the fountain pen is pretty much a dip pen with its own reservoir of ink so in other words it's like drawing with this without having to dip in ink constantly so now you have that that nib there see similar nib and now you can actually you can, some are made that you can replace the nibs and some you can, actually can't but most of them are enable you to switch it out now the cool thing is see I'm unscrewing it here it allows you to refill this cartridge with ink so it has its own self-contained replaceable ink reservoir and that's pretty cool because it's like you know drawing with these are really fun but having to dip constantly and making sure that you clean the nib to not create splotches or blobs of ink can sometimes be a little bit uh, of a, a, a maintenance requirement that turns people off. It's really not to me because it's a part of the experience and it makes it really rich and even when it has a little splotches it makes the drawing a little bit more authentic. You know, but with this it's really cool and people use this for writing a lot. It's really cool. And this is a really fine point. Now, I think the downside to fountain pens is that they can be pretty pricey. <laughs> they can range for, a good quality one can range for anywhere from like 30 bucks to even like 200, 300, 400 dollars. Yep, they can get there. Um, but they're, they're, they're really cool. But of course, I think at the same time that, you know, there are pros and cons to everything. All of these so far I've introduced, there are pros and cons to them. You know, this, this, the fact that they're really good, but they're, the points deteriorate over time. 
these you know you can replace them but you have to dip in ink this is really cool but it's just not as authentic a feel as a dip pen would but they all have a unique quality about each of them that is worth exploring I think And as I said, maybe I'll do a tutorial in which I'll do a drawing using um, each of these. So you can get an idea of you know, how to use them. What's, what, what's, what should we discuss next? Let me see. Uh, okay. Here's the popular TD Bank pen. <laughs> Ballpoint pen. Now, originally when the ballpoint pen was introduced, it was really made to give the fountain pen a big challenge. Um, and it w and of course, as we can see today, it's pretty much the most popular writing instrument because it's cheap, it's durable, it's portable, it's economical. You know, it's it's really a lot of good qualities about it. Um, however, of course, as I said, it's, it was developed primarily for writing and not necessarily for drawing. But of course, we're artists in anything that we can use to create marks, we will use to draw. Okay, so. Um, the ballpoint pen is pretty cool. Of course, as you know, there's a there's a tiny ball that's actually in the tip. I think you can see it here. And there's ink flowing and as you, as you touch the surface, the ball spins and as a result of that, the ink rolls over it and you see a mark. Now, why do artists generally like the ballpoint pen? Well, um, the ballpoint pen is pretty popular because for artists, I think, this is one of the re reasons why I like it. It's because you, when you make marks, you have to press down on it. See, if you just, you know, if you just do like this, the line will be pretty light. See? But for some people, that may be an inconvenience that you have to press down to make a mark. Well, an artist will capitalize on this. Why? Because that enables you to create a wide variety of marks of different values you see that that's what makes the ballpoint pen really special so you can create a wide variety of marks of different values and you can simulate the effects of a pencil see that go from light to dark based on the amount of pressure you put down which is pretty much the same thing you do with a pencil and that's one of the things that makes it really cool so you can sketch things out I think I did a, uh, a tutorial where I did a portrait and so you can really treat it like it's a pen of course you can't erase this because it's ink but the thing is you can make it really light and then go over it afterwards and reinforce those lines as you've decided on what lines you're going to keep. Um, so that's one of the main things. So that's the, the ballpoint pen. And of course, ballpoint pens are like so cheap, you know, so, which makes it cool. So you can, you, I'm, I'm sure wherever you are right now, there's a ballpoint pen close to you. <laughs> now, the next drawing instrument, which one should I find, is the, oh, the roller ball pen. Now the rollerball pen is very similar to the ballpoint pen, okay? Because it it's uh, it has a ink um, that is more water based though. It has a similar ballpoint mechanism in terms of how the ink actually flows or makes contact with the paper. However, the ink is more water based, so it flows more heavily and more freely than a ballpoint pen does. So it doesn't require as much effort to write or make a mark, and as a result of that you don't have the ability to create this variation in value as you would with a ballpoint pen. However, it allows you to make lines pretty loose and freely of an even weight and value, which is good for like sketching or, you know, cross hatching. You can do virtually the same thing, but just not create that value gradation as you would with a ballpoint pen. Because you see the, the, the amount of ink is pretty consistent whether I'm pressing hard or not. See that? I press really lightly. 
and I create virtually the same value as if I press really hard. And that's a good and bad thing. So as I said, there are pros and cons to almost all of these. And that's a good thing for some people, and that's, you know, a con for some. So whatever suits your purpose, all right? Uh, then we have uh, markers. <laughs> what is popularly known as a, a marker is really just a, uh, a felt tip pen, meaning the, the point of it is really just um, like a compressed fabric right here. Uh, fiber all right and it pretty much like what's in here the holder or the chamber is really like a, a kind of a spongy or absorbent material that soaks the ink in and it it, it um, moves to the tip now the thing is that's why we have to really cap it all the time because it is it can get dry really quickly and um, but the thing is this enables it to be able to be produce in a wide variety of colors. I think I think markers are perhaps more popular than uh, more commonly used than ballpoint pens because they're more versatile. You know, they you can have them in a variety of colors, um, different quality inks and so on, but primarily the the ink quality is not really made it's not light fast. Meaning like it's not necessarily meant to be uh, displayed or exposed to light for a long period of time and preserve the, the color quality okay so it's more for like short-term use but the thing is you can create I mean beautiful you can't I mean there is just limitless the amount of um, uses you have for markers and of course you have a wide variety of them perhaps the most common one you know you guys I'm sure use sharpie or some kind of a permanent marker like this so this is like a felt tip pen okay or marker and also in addition to the fact that you have them in a wide variety of colors you have them in a wide variety of tips tip sizes so like um like this is one i i use a lot it's the copic and see it has the the graphic tip like chisel tip and it's good for you know filling in large areas um There's a lot. Even when you see a highlighter, it's really a variation of a, a, a felt tip pen. You know? Um, so, yeah, so we have the, uh, the markers. And of course, you know, markers are pretty cool for like doing, you know, quick sketches and little coloring and stuff like that. They're really fun to use. Um, see how easily I filled in that area? Pretty cool. Of course, perhaps the most popular ones are the technical drawing pens. Um, and these are the ones that you see that I always, almost always use in most of my videos. And they're pretty awesome. Um, the, I think perhaps the main con or disadvantage is the fact that they don't create as much line with variation as the fountain pens or dip pens um, but they're made with pretty much um, pigment based ink which is as I said best for like work that is meant to for creating fine art if you want to create fine art these are the pens to do because they, they're, they're archival they're um, generally waterproof um, fade proof they will preserve the quality of the color and drawing for a long time and good for combining with other media now the disadvantage is you may not necessarily find them in a, a wide variety of colors as you would like markers and uh, or water-based ink pens um, but you do find some that that do have water-based inks but um, for the ones with pigment based ink you won't find that wide variety of color but it's they're, they're really cool and um, some of the advantages is that they are, um, they create a consistent line. They really, you know, the line quality is very consistent, you know. Um, so you know what, what's, what's, what the type of lines that you're going to create. There's no question about that. It's very consistent, very reliable. Um, and also, very clean. So you notice that there's no splotches or blobs of ink, you know, no smearing and smudging. The line lines are very clean, 
movement is very smooth you know now this one is refillable this is a repeater graph technical drawing pen now this is really pricey okay this you're looking at like 30 bucks here um, now I, I think they're very expensive however you know I'm not sure if the quality is necessarily the price is justified but they are very well made um, and and with maintenance they will last you a very long time which is also you know a pro and a con so for some people are turned off by the fact that these require maintenance like for example they can tend to clog you know depending on how you use like after you use it you have to make sure you you clean it you know if it there there it, it involves maintenance you know and I think that some people may t be turned off by that so the thing is with these you just uncap it and it's ready to use you use it you cap it and that's it virtually no you know maintenance required but with these they're a little more delicate you have to be more careful of how you use them and the fact that um, the ink is uh, refillable which is pro and con as I said some people don't mind that there are some of these that are made with a replaceable cartridge so you can actually take the cartridge out and uh, and and just dispose of it and just put another one in with this you have to actually let me see if I can show you unscrew this clamp ring here and kind of like twist this off and there you go you pour the ink in and then when you're done you fix it again it's really not that much to be honest with you but some people are turned off by little stuff like that so but the lines they produce are beautiful you know really smooth really excellent drawing machines these things you know um, so I, I would suggest you definitely uh, you know I wouldn't say necessarily you should buy one of these but if you can afford to definitely you know I think the more you're exposed to different things the better All right the quill pen the reed pen the dip pen the fountain pen the the ballpoint pen the rollerball pen the felt tip pen the technical drawing pen so that's one two three four five six seven eight nine alright now what's the last one? Oh, that's eight actually then we have and perhaps this is also as old as <laughs> the quill and uh, reed pens and that's the brush yes brushes can be used for pen and ink drawings okay and if you take a good look at uh, Asian art you know in Asian drawings you can see that a lot of their work and the art is done with brushes you know of course their um, particular ink drawing brushes and stuff like that but I, I, I wouldn't necessarily tell you to go all that far with it you know but the cool thing is about brushes is I think that they're the most versatile of versatile of all of these mediums, okay? Based on the fact that you can do virtually anything with these with a brush, okay? You can create very detailed lines with a brush. You can create line variation. See that? You can use you can do that. You can create detail. You can do anything you can with a brush, with a pen, you can do it with a brush, okay? However, of course, I think um, one of the things that may terrify people is the fact that the tip of a brush is not as firm as a nib of a pen, okay? So it, it does require a little bit more delicacy and practice to get, you know, and, and getting used to, but they can virtually do anything and the thing is you can get a wide variety of of uh, brush tips to handle any types of details you may con be confronted with and also um, there, there are different uh, brush shapes okay it's for creating different types of lines um, and sizes for creating different covering different areas and, and laying on a whole you can cover areas really easily with this okay um, you can create washes when you're done you know so you can actually do an ink drawing and do a wash with the same brush um, now this is also very popular it's a um, water brush so with this it allows you to 
fill this reservoir with water and then you can just pretty much have a a a infinitely wet brush okay well not infinitely wet but as long as the water is in there but you can always have a wet brush you, there's no need to dip in water also you can actually put the uh, uh, say for example a wash in here so you can mix say ink with with water and get a gray and then you have your your gray wash you know so it's very versatile um, brushes um, very 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 versatile so I, I would definitely experiment with that as well and um, of course last but not least is the pen brush so you can think of this as a pen that acts as a brush or a brush with a reservoir like a pen <laughs> okay so and here I have a wide variety of them with um, Secura they actually have one that's with the Pigma um, pigment based ink or their you know um, proprietary Pigma ink so you can actually use this pen as if it's an actual brush see and, and the beautiful thing is it creates these nice line this nice line variations so you can have lines of a variety of of width really cool stuff um, so I have one here for Secure. I have one um, this is for the Copic I like the Copic one a lot for some reason and that's another thing why it's good to explore different brands because you'll find that one brand will make a particular pen better and another one may not you know so or you may like another one uh, you may like one over the other you know it's up to you this is the uh, Prismacolor all right and um, this is one that's pretty big fabric cast and it you know it's pretty useful as well filling in large areas but at the same time as I said it creates see that line width variation is really cool Alright, um, and I think that's pretty much it. So, uh, I think you have like a wide variety of ink drawing materials to use. You have your quill pen, you have your reed or bamboo pen, you have your dip pen, you have a fountain pen, you have your um, uh, ballpoint pen, you have a rollerball pen, you have your felted pen or marker, your technical drawing pen, you have your brush, and you have your brush pen. Okay, and that's 10. I think of the most common used, commonly used ink drawing instruments. Now, as I said, you know, these are drawing instruments, meaning they're just a, a, a way of depositing ink to the drawing surface. So you don't have to necessarily feel limited to these. These are, you know, common and they've they're proven themselves, but don't feel limited. You can use your finger to create an ink drawing, you know? She's a nice texture there. Look at that. You know, don't feel limited to just whatever. You know, that's the thing, that's beautiful thing about creativity. You can use virtually anything that can create a mark to create ink drawings. You can use a piece of sponge, you know, whatever it is. Anything within your grasp. So um, what I'll do is in the next in the next video, I'll follow up on um the rest of the ink drawing materials that are common to use that I generally use like paper and pencil and other little accessories and stuff like that but these I think are the main the ten main types of um, ink drawing materials and I advise you to expose yourself to as many of these as possible and even expose yourself to the many variations of each of these as possible um, and and really build your repertoire of you know drawing media. Mm -hmm.